Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm ZS Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here at the AWS stand inside Think Forum at IBM Think 2024. I'm going to be joined in a minute by Alan Braun from AWS, and we're going to talk about all the recent news uh, between IBM and AWS uh, from the Think Show. So hang on one second, and I'll be back with Alan. So the first partner I'm talking to is AWS. I'm here with Alan Braun. Uh, Alan, I want to make sure you get your title right. It's a long title. Managing Director of Tech Partnerships in AWS Marketplace Americas. Correct. Uh, can you just uh, give a quick intro on yourself and what you do for AWS? Yeah, thanks for having me for starters. So at AWS, I lead all technology partnerships in the Americas. What does that mean? That's all ISV partners in the infrastructure category. So think about data and analytics, observability, security, generative AI. I also have all vertical partners by industry, all horizontal business apps. So think about Adobe and Salesforce and Zendesk. I also lead startups. And then some of our biggest partners like IBM and SAP, as well as Marketplace on both the buy side and the sell side. So I work with partners as well as customers. That's a big job. It's a big job, there's a lot yeah. going on for sure. All right, we're at day three of IBM Think. Uh, we had a couple of keynotes yesterday, we had IBM Partner Day. Uh, what are your thoughts from the show? Obviously, AI is a big theme here. Uh, yeah. Are we ready? It's a really good question. You know, I'm really excited to be here. The energy, I said earlier, it's outstanding. Yeah. I, I love the keynote, Arvin was great to hear about really what IBM is seeing in the market. It's very consistent with what we're seeing also. I think there's a lot of energy around AI, but we're in the early days of AI. What does it mean? How do we actually bring value to our joint customers? And the opportunity for IBM and, and AWS to come together like we are is really unique. And I, I think it's been a great couple days. I've spent a lot of time with IBM and understanding the energy that we have, that we've built over the last year with the partnership. Speaking to customers, their excitement about how do we bring this value to the board and how do we generate real value for our company. Yeah, and, and so talk about that partnership between AWS and I, uh, IBM and AWS. I don't think people realize it's as deep as it is. Yeah, it's pretty exciting actually. Over the last year, we've been working really close to figure out how do we innovate together. You know, IBM has deep industry knowledge and regulatory expertise. Maybe more than any other company. Right? It's amazing, yeah. and the relationships they have with the enterprises, combined with our cloud infrastructure and the security that we bring, it's pretty powerful with us coming together. So over the last year, we've spent a lot of time looking at how do we get IBM on the AWS marketplace. I'm excited to say we have 44 listings, 29 software solutions, SaaS on the marketplace, 15 services, and it's available in 92 countries now. And so we've laid the groundwork. A lot of what I talked about with the IBM team this week was, all right, now how do we scale and get this out to our joint customers? So it's pretty exciting. We've had a lot of a great announcements this week on how we're innovating together. And, and talk about why marketplace presence is so important. I, I talk to other, uh, uh, some companies all the time, and they don't, I don't think they fully realize the significance of being in the marketplace and the benefit that brings to customers. It's a great question. So with the AWS marketplace, what we see is partners see a 27% higher win rate, 40% faster sales cycles, and 80% richer deal sizes. So what's happening is we're creating, first of all, incentive on both the partner side and the AWS seller side to drive deals through Marketplace. We're seeing customers with committed spend that they're driving down through Marketplace. That's creating a channel where it's really accelerating deals into the market. And people are pretty excited about it. Yeah, and so from the customer perspective, what you just brought up is the key. They've got committed spend. If they can use the companies they want to use through the Marketplace, then that's a win-win. 100%, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then what we're, <clears throat> so what we're finding is customers are actually now choosing to do renewals and finding how do we put more through Marketplace. Customers are also seeing 66% in efficiency gain through procurement by using the Marketplace, 75% onboarding new partners quicker, and 10% reduction in licensing costs. So the customers are also getting value from going through the Marketplace. All right, well that's, uh, Big benefit to customers there. Now, uh, I saw uh, yesterday, AWS and IBM issued a joint press release. Uh, a lot of news, uh, and it was a, the, the umbrella uh, news item, I guess, was about scaling responsible AI uh, and making it democratize it for everybody, right? Now, responsible AI is one of those funny terms. I find everybody uses it. I think the definition of it 
yeah, I don't know, maybe borders on accurate or not accurate, depending on the company, but I know AWS has been working on this for a long time. So when you say responsible AI, what are you talking about? Yeah, I think it's a really important thing. You know, AI has so many benefits. We also have to be very careful when we think about AI. AWS has been very active in the community. We spent a lot of time, our CEO has spent time with President Biden, was in the UK, spending time with the highest levels to think of how do we use AI responsibility? How do we think about privacy and security? How do we think about safety to make sure that we're, we're guaranteeing that the data we come back is gonna be safe? How do we make sure it's fair to all the stakeholders that are involved? How do we think about the governance of how we manage the data and the access within an environment? I think what we're seeing is responsible AI is more than just a framework, it's a shift. It's an organizational change. It's a culture change for a lot of companies. And I think we're, we're at the early days of making sure that we as a provider bring AI into the market in a responsible way. All right, now can you go through uh, just the highlights? I'm not gonna make you go through every announcement yeah. because there was, there, was uh, there was a lot of announcements. But what do you think are the most notable parts of that? Yeah, so first off, I, I think IBM and, and AWS coming together is really unique. It's an opportunity to innovate at a deeper level than most companies can do. It's two giants coming together. And one of the first announcements I'll talk about is I'm really excited about Watson X Governance and SageMaker coming together. This is a deep product integration. We talk about responsible AI. How do we bring governance to Amazon SageMaker when we're building, when we're deploying, and when we're training models? So this is now a tight integration that allows a, an approval workflow to make sure that we're bringing safety, we're bringing security, we're bringing privacy, we're making sure the right stakeholders are able to weigh in at the time that the model is, is being developed or trained. Okay. So I think it's pretty exciting. And then, uh, and so for, the, for those not completely familiar with SageMaker, uh, that's your I guess, LLM library, if you will. Um, but it, it's built with the concept of giving people, customers choice right, of, of AI models. Yeah, I would say it's slightly yeah. different. You know, at AWS, we think of generative AI and AI in a three-stack bundle. At the bottom of the stack is the infrastructure that you need to really build those models, to deploy those models, to train those models. This is all about some of our silicon with Inferentia and Tranium. These are our chipsets that deliver price and performance. We have Amazon SageMaker, which is a platform that allows you to easily build, train, and deploy models. And we've got a wealth of different models available on SageMaker. In the middle of the stack, we have Amazon Bedrock. Bedrock, yeah. And Bedrock is really about this idea of giving democratized access, and it's a managed service to some of the leading cloud models, foundational models in the industry. Anthropic, Meta, Cohere, Stability. And then at the top level is Amazon Q. It's an application layer for people that don't want to go build. How do we automate yeah. the way that they get started? And so SageMaker is really, if you're building and training a model, it's the best way to do it. And are there other key parts of the announcement you want to call out? Yeah, so DB2 is an exciting announcement I saw that. also. Yeah. DB2 is now available on Marketplace in a meter-based pricing. What does this mean? You pay as you go. This is a different world that we're living in now yeah. to have that available on AWS Marketplace, and we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, pay as you go, uh, I think particularly with AI is important because I don't, uh, when I talk to customers, I don't think they fully understand what they need and how much they need or what they want to spend. And so asking for a big upfront commit, it, you know, doesn't, may, uh, uh, you know, from a budgetary perspective, may not work for them, right? So the pay as you go model lets them ease into AI. I think it also matches our customer obsession yeah. how we do things. Yeah. AWS was built as a platform to be consumption-based pricing. And, and we have lowered our price several times through the years to continue to give back. So this idea that IBM is actually coming into our culture and we're, we're jointly bringing it to market in the way that our customers expect AWS services coming to market is pretty awesome. That's one piece of it. Also, to do it through Marketplace, this is new to have consumption-based pricing in Marketplace, which is also exciting for us to see it come through with DB2. Yeah, and you touched on this. You mentioned the expansion to 92 countries. Um, and so can you dive a little deeper, where is it available now where it wasn't before? Uh, and, and that's a lot of countries. 
Yeah, yeah. 92 yeah. countries. Yeah. We're pretty excited about that. And that's the power of Marketplace. As we get things into Marketplace, Marketplace is available around the world. It makes it easier to transact. And so we've been working with IBM. And now the trick is we're building go-to-markets on top of that, of how do we actually do the right enablement and acceleration to ultimately reach our customers in a quicker way. And so our customers are going to get an ease of purchase with IBM technology and AWS through the Marketplace. And the 92 countries, is we're pretty excited about that. Yeah. Uh, so anything else you want to call up? No, I would say yeah. we're in the early days. You know, I, I just heard a stat that 90% of Gen AI projects right now are still in the proof of concept. Yeah. Only 10% have gone to production. Actually, Crawford Del Pret, uh, during the day one keynote, said something interesting. Uh, he's the uh, CRO of, IB, of IDC. He said 99% uh, of publicly available data uh, is in LLMs. Uh, but only 1% of corporate data. Actually, I think that was an Arvin stat. Um, and uh, I thought that in itself was shocking. So how little corporate data is being used with Gen AI today, so. And what, what I think I'm seeing is three areas. One is people are using public models. Yeah. And they're finding out, okay, it's not really what we need. So now how do we start fine tuning and training and use RAG to put some corporate yeah. data in? And then how do we go to actually deliver more models that are based on enterprise data? And the last thing I would say is this is a team sport. We're going to have to bring a lot of partners together yeah. and a lot of people in the room to put the best team on the field to go get the best solutions. Okay, so just one last question. For those watching, if companies are thinking about their AI strategy, particularly the Gen AI strategy, a couple of pieces of advice you can give them? Yeah, I, I think recognize that Gen AI is not just a technology shift. It's an organizational shift. It requires a culture change. It requires the difference to the way you think about data. You've got to break down silos in your organization. You need to change the way people collaborate and work together. And so I would say the biggest advice I would give you is it's a 20% technology problem. It's an 80% organizational problem. And this is where companies like IBM and AWS coming together, we bring the best of both worlds to help customers really realize that value. And the next thing I would say is make sure you have a defined use case, that you have a measurable outcome that you're trying to achieve. I see a lot of people playing, yeah. but they don't really measure what they're trying to achieve. It's critical. You pick a use case, you pick an outcome that you want to achieve, and you go after it. I think it's just a big sandbox right now. and I, th I think most companies are um, throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks, and because they're not sure what outcome to even look for. And I suppose that's where really the power of IBM and AWS coming together, you can help guide them through that. Totally yeah. agree with you, yeah. critical. And I do think that in this era of AI, your partners become very important, your vendor partners. Um, uh, I, my, my advice to companies has been, find those vendors that truly want to partner with you and not just sell your products, because I think this is a case where you need those services, you need the best practices, and you need a company that's going to stand by what they're doing. Yeah, well, so. you need a trusted advisor, yeah, and your yeah, partners so. are where you're going to get it. Uh, all right, Alan, well, thanks for your time. Thanks so much. Yeah. So, uh, on behalf of Alan Braun, I'm Zias Caravalla uh, from the AWS booth inside the Tech Forum uh, at uh, IBM Think. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.